Now, of course, challenges to women in the workplace have always been a major issue, and now the administration looking to make permanent child care payments. But these come with no strings attached, not unlike those in the past that were sort of aimed at getting people, particularly women, into the workforce. Uh, with me now, Independent Women's Forum, Kelsey Bollar. And Kelsey, uh, uh, you posted a very touching tweet of your daughter saying, quote, over the 4th, I got to spend a wonderful week off Twitter with my daughter. That was working for much of it. Uh, so she grew very attached. Leaving her today for work is so hard. My maternal instincts want to keep loving her all day. Um, you know, it really touched me, and obviously the issue of, uh, of maternal instincts uh, never really added into any of these conversations, right? The debate over equal pay, getting women back to the workforce. How, do you, how does someone quantify that? Exactly. You're going to make me emotional here on TV with you. It's very uh, challenging for new moms to figure out how much they want to work, when and where, whether that's from home and so forth. And it is a silver lining of the COVID pandemic that it appears more companies are offering more flexible work arrangements for uh, moms and all workers for that matter. But I do think we need to be very cautious to assume that any decrease in female labor participation participation rates is a net negative. Uh, certainly it has economic impacts, but what type of impacts might more mothers staying home uh, with their children have on the economy, uh, uh, on, on the economy in the long term, in terms of these children being raised in healthy, uh, stable households uh, with those attachments to their parents. We know, uh, thanks to remote learning, a lot of parents woke up to the horrors happening inside uh, the public school systems where educators were prioritizing critical race theory over basic math and so forth. And so many parents are choosing to home homeschool or pursue other alternative right. education models, including African-American parents. I, I think this is very underreported. Prior to the pandemic, only 3% of African-American families uh, homeschooled. That number has spiked to 16%. So, of course, this will have short and long-term impacts on our economy. You know, and, and another thing is, you know, when, for instance, you hear the debate, okay, women make 82 cents on a dollar to men. Uh, and, you know, of course, they, they have a lot of things that are associated with maternity, uh, taking time off, losing that place in work, not being on the fast track for promotion, those sort of things. But it's been told to me that someone needs to find a way to be able to say, yeah, but, you know, part of that 82 cents is the joy that you expressed in that tweet and that somehow economists maybe be missed and, and other people may be missing a greater point here. You pointed some of that out, but I don't think I don't think it's underscored enough. Absolutely. This is why we need to be careful in the way we discuss the so-called gender pay gap, because it really is a gender choice gap where women are making different choices about their careers, how much they want to lean in, work overtime, uh, the types of jobs they take. Uh, we also need to be careful about fulfilling gender quotas because look there are plenty of jobs right now available and it's interesting that women are choosing not to take them there there is an element of choice here that i think uh, the left often wants to deny in an effort to encourage and empower all women right. to stay in the workforce when really that's not the choice that every woman and mom wants to make kelsey uh, I got less than a minute to go, but I do want to ask, uh, you mentioned CRRT. I think there's uh, some other things that, that I really would like to see Republicans talk about, and that's an emphasis on the quality of education, particularly curriculums for inner cities. Uh, and I know that uh, the IWF supports what they're calling the Children Have Opportunities in Classrooms Everywhere Act, the Choice Act. In less than a minute, explain why that would be such an important decision for the entire country. The education system in America needs to answer to children, not to teachers' unions. Parents need the ability to choose uh, the education option that works best for their child. That will ultimately drive more women to the workforce, by the way, because they will feel more safe and secure that their child is in an individual uh, individualized learning environment rather than this one-size-fits-all option that the government wants to promote via public schools. School choice is good for all families across the board, regardless of race, income, and other other socioeconomical statuses. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's without a doubt the most important issue we've got going as we head into this digital economy and a digital, the fourth industrial revolution. We are not prepared for it, and mostly because our schools have been held hostage by unions. Kelsey, beautiful photograph. I'm glad you had a wonderful fourth, and I'm glad you were able to share it on the show. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you.